straight ahead on 12 News, he helped his son launch a dream. We pay tribute to the man who helped put Brooklyn Center on the map. Then, waiting to open, why a Golden Valley entrepreneur is having trouble launching her indoor playground business. But first, a new report on teen pregnancy, what's working, and where there's more work to do. 12 News starts right now. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Johnson. And I'm Shannon Slatton. Hennepin County says the teen birth rate continues on its downward trend. The county reported a 15% decline for teens in Hennepin County and in Brooklyn Center, a 35% decrease between 2012 and 2013. Experts say this means educational programs are working, but there's still more work to do. Off 42nd Avenue in Robbinsdale, there's a wealth of information for teenagers and their parents. We will see around 1,700 young people uh, each year for about 3,500 visits uh, in the clinic. And then we'll reach around 7,000 young people and their families with our education programs. NX Teen Clinic Director Brian Russ is pleased to see new numbers showing birth rates declining for the seventh year in a row. I think it's wonderful news, um, and I think that um, um, young people are making very good decisions. Studies show teens are putting off having sex until later, and Russ says there's also more education and open conversation about sex now. We have a generation of parents who are more willing and more realistic uh, in appreciating the need to have this conversation with their kids. But while teen pregnancies have steadily gone down, teen STD rates have steadily gone up, which means when it comes to teen sexual health, there's still work to be done. The chlamydia rate among youth has, has been going up for quite a long time, about the last 15 years, and the same thing is true of the, the gonorrhea rate among young people. The latest numbers show aside from 2012, chlamydia rates among teens have increased in the last 15 years. The gonorrhea rate rose 69 percent since 2011. While we're really happy that the teen birth rate goes down and has continued to go down for actually the past 20, 25 years, um, in that same time period, the STD rates have gone up, which is a concern. Educational programs have changed in the last five years as well. They now put more emphasis on healthy relationships, setting goals, and honest conversation with adults. An unusual crime investigation is underway in Plymouth. Police believe a man may have brought his elderly mother to the bank while she was dead and made a cash withdrawal. But we don't know definitively was she unconscious? Was she just incredibly weak and just sort of trying to maintain whatever she could um, just in a very quiet manner? Or was she dead? On January 5th, a man came into the Wells Fargo on Fernbrook Lane in Plymouth with his 90-year-old mother and withdrew $850 on her behalf. Bank employees told police that the woman did not move and they weren't sure if she was breathing and her feet dragged underneath her wheelchair. Two hours later, the man called police to report that his mother wasn't breathing. Officers responded to a home in the 1700 block of Weston Lane North and found the woman dead lying on a dirty bed that smelled of urine and feces. Now Plymouth police are investigating the son for elderly neglect and financial exploitation. My assumption is that over the last year or more, maybe, I don't know, or certainly less, I don't know, things really did go downhill. And somebody at some level um, should have intervened more aggressively. And if that falls to us, then it does. But we only know what we know. When charges have yet to be filed against the Sun, Chief Goldstein says that could take possibly several weeks. No word yet on how the woman died. A new lawsuit claims Brooklyn Park Police, Medtronic, and two of its employees falsely accused a man of phoning in bomb threats. The plaintiff, Chia Yang, was accused of phoning in bomb threats twice to this Medtronic building on Northland Drive in Brooklyn Park. Yang was arrested and spent two days in jail. According to the suit, surveillance video later determined a different suspect made the calls. No evidence of explosives was ever found. Court documents say Yang was suspected initially because he was a former Medtronic employee discharged due to a disability. Yang filed suit seeking punitive damages. Brooklyn Park, meanwhile, has appointed an interim city manager. Mike Sable will take over next month for Jamie Verbrugge, who's leaving to become the city manager of Bloomington. Sable is currently Brooklyn Park's assistant city manager. Governor Dayton believes more school counselors are needed to help today's students prepare for tomorrow's workforce. He's expected to propose a boost in funding for school counselors in his education budget. 
A report shows Minnesota ranks 48th in the nation in terms of the numbers of counselors per student. School administrators, however, may disagree with the proposal. The Minnesota Association of School Administrators believes education money should be spent how local districts see fit. The need to give students better job information is just one thing Lieutenant Governor Tina Smith talked about today at an economic development meeting in Brooklyn Park. Smith says there are currently 70,000 jobs unfilled in Minnesota. She says the new unemployment rate of just 3.6 percent is good news, but it's leaving a worker shortage that should be addressed beginning in high school. And while the latest economic news is good, Smith says it's not time to be complacent. And I would argue that this is why we need to keep our focus on entrepreneurship and continue to nourish Minnesota's spirit of invention so that we can weather these inevitable ups and downs. Smith points to $240 million spent on economic initiatives like the Angel Investor Tax Credit and the Job Creation Fund. The Economic Development Association of Minnesota hopes the legislature will agree to spend money on infrastructure like sewer and water supplies to help attract new industry. That's how businesses are built. Yeah. I mean, they start with the dream and they, yeah. you build it. After all, this is America. The man who helped his son launch a dream has died. Nassim Ansari, father of Surly Brewing founder Omar Ansari, passed away last week. He was 82 years old. Nassim Ansari owned an abrasive metals business in Brooklyn Center, which later became the home of Surly Brewing. The company started in 2006 and recently opened another much larger brewery in Minneapolis. A memorial for Nassim Ansari will be held at the Minneapolis Brewery on January 31st. It's been more than six months, but a Golden Valley entrepreneur is still waiting to open an indoor playground for children. She's hoping to open the facility in Minnetonka, but she's run into some unexpected problems. Cassie Bonstrom explains. Kinetic sand and pounding the nails. There are children's toys. Building things. Costumes. Children's games. There's another slide on the other side. Even a ship-themed play structure designed especially for young children. We're still trying to set up the twisty slide. It's been a real challenge. The problem is there are no children here to enjoy them. Yes, it's been very frustrating, very trying. Sarah Bacham is trying to open the Play and Learn Cafe off Cedar Lake Road in Minnetonka. And then the kitchen over there. She's been planning, designing, and buying supplies for a 5,000 square foot indoor play area and restaurant. Popsicles, you have to match up the letters. But she can't make any of it a reality until she receives a building permit from the city. It's just a waiting game. She's been trying to get the permit for months, but has been in disagreements with a neighboring business. The holdup is over parking spaces. The landlord of the neighboring in Strip Mall says there are more parking spaces needed before the Play and Learn Cafe can open for business. Losing thousands of dollars, literally thousands. The city is withholding Bauckham's building permit until both sides sign a document about the parking situation. The city gave them a six-month deadline. It's the problem that I have to pay rent and I don't have any cash flow. <laughs> and I mean, how long can that go on? So I can't survive until June. If this goes until June, I'll have to call it quits. While she waits, Bauckham says she's still paying bills for the unused space. Starting out in the red, <laughs> it's, it's going to take us a while to recruit our loss. Meanwhile, Bauckham has a meeting next Monday with the city. She hopes everyone can come to a resolution then. With luck, three to four weeks. And builders can begin the anticipated four weeks of work they have to do before opening. Party room A. It's party been a long process, office, much longer than expected. Ideas. But she is sure of one thing. It will certainly be worth it in the end. Well, we spoke to one of the owners of the Lone Spur Grill who said they're waiting to sign the document until they can agree on the area's parking needs. He said their lots are often full on evenings, especially during the summer months, which is why they're asking for at least 40 more parking spaces put in before the cafe opens. Meanwhile, the city of Minnetonka is doing an independent traffic study, which should be completed by next week. They hope the results of that study will help the two sides resolve the issue. Mike and Shannon. All right, Cassie, thank you very much. Well, still ahead, we head to Providence Academy to meet a very determined standout student. And later in sports, the Brett girls hockey team is all fired up. We catch up with them after they knocked off number one ranked Blake. But first, a Friday melt. Temperatures are expected to rise into the upper 30s. 
Well, he is the epitome of a well-rounded student. Andrew Buchelman is a junior at Providence Academy, but he already has a long list of accomplishments. Reporter Sonia Goins has more on this week's Standout Student. 4x plus 5 to the 7th dx. Instead of demonstrating that I can do all these things and saying that I can by my actions, I feel like I just kind of excel. Andrew Buchelman is soft-spoken and really doesn't like the limelight. I try to excel in academics, sports, and just community service. Now here's where we can be very clever. He excels in his favorite subjects, math and physics. So the derivative of 4x plus 5 is 4. Andrew's also into robotics. We put a lot of time into it, so by, by the end it, it kind of hurts to see it break or just kind of bend in certain ways. While getting good grades are a high priority, He's focused on the bigger picture. In my opinion, they're more of a measure of your aptitude in a subject, not necessarily something that makes or breaks you. Andrew is also very athletic. I'm a captain of the cross country team. That's a pretty big deal for a junior. I run varsity. I'm the number two runner on our team for guys. He's also making strides when it comes to serving the community. He recently went on a mission trip to Denver where he helped to repair houses for low-income families. Learning about their daily life, kind of understanding the struggles they have to go through. Andrew says balancing schoolwork and outside activities can be challenging. He says the key is to find time for yourself. I just try to have some downtime to make sure I can. I'm not super stressed all the time. In Plymouth, Sonia Goins, 12 News. Andrew is also in the band and he plays the trumpet. He was also nominated for the Excel Award, which recognizes good grades, leadership skills, community service, athletics, and the arts. I think he'll do well. Yeah, you didn't leave anything out. He's got a lot going for him, I think. <laughs> Still ahead, top theater honors for two local high school productions. And up next in sports, Terry Tuma drops by for his weekly ice fishing tip. Jay Wilcox says that and more when we come back. We start with girls hockey, and this is always a good matchup when these two teams get on the ice. That's right, and uh, a win that Breck is hoping really can carry them through not only the rest of the regular season, but also into the playoffs here. It was a playoff-like atmosphere for the Breck-Blake girls hockey matchup on Tuesday night. A win for Breck has their team pumped up for what they hope is a run to the state tournament. It's safe to say that Breck's 5-4 win over Blake Tuesday won't soon be forgotten by the players that made it happen. I've never been so excited. I mean, the whole game just had such good energy, and obviously losing to them at the beginning, more towards the beginning of the season, was just such a bummer. So we just had that much more of a strive to win. And we had the emotions of a section final, and it was ugh. after Grace scored in the last two minutes, I like hugged the girl next to me. We were jumping around, like literally tears of joy were coming down my face. It was so fun. That win was part of a late season push by Brack. They say a holiday tournament showing at Edina against three solid class AA programs where they finished runner-up to second-ranked Maple Grove was a great stepping stone. Yeah, it felt good to uh, beat some of the AA teams and come close to them. It's always a good confidence booster knowing that we can keep up with even like the top-ranked AA teams in the state. I think it was a big confidence boost for them um, that we were so successful in that tournament being the only class A team and we made it to the finals and we played well in that final game as well. We just we couldn't put the puck in. With four regular season games remaining, the Mustangs are definitely getting into playoff mode and the energy level is high. All we want to do is go to state and win the championship. So just getting ready for that every practice, every game until then, it's just our excitement level is just, it keeps increasing and going up. Now the whole team is confident, happy, like wanting to skate that extra hard lap in practice, wanting to like shoot pucks after practice because like, we want to go back to the X, and I think everyone's now like, we can do it. They'll most likely have to duplicate their win over Blake to reach the state tournament. The Breck girls are ready to give it a shot. The Mustangs are at Dodge County Saturday, then wrap up the regular season with three games next week. In girls basketball, Osseo has battled through a stretch of illness and injuries to get things going in the right direction. The Orioles have won three of their past four games with the one loss coming to ninth-ranked Centennial. After starting out 5-1, and one, the Orioles ran into some tough opponents in late December and early January, but that should help in the long run. Yes, definitely. We like playing against harder teams. Like, that's what makes us know what we need to work on. Like, that shows us our weaknesses, our strength, everything. Yeah, we try to take something each from every game and try to um, improve on that specific thing. Like one game it'll be defense, one game it'll be shooting. Um, it just depends on, you know, how we did that game and what team and like how they played against us. 
Tuesday night, Osseo plays at district rival Park Center. For a long time, Osseo dominated that series, but now the defending Class 3A champion Pirates are the favorite. The Orioles look forward to the challenge. We definitely look forward to that a lot. Um, still just taking it one game at a time. We don't want to think too much about it, um, but we're definitely taking it into account that that's a good team, and we all know they are. I feel like we're ready, and I'm excited. It's going to be a great game, so be there. Some good advice there. Before that game at Park Center Tuesday, Osseo is at home against Irondale on Friday. Sometimes, as the saying goes, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. The same thinking can apply to fishing, too. Terry Tuma explains in his weekly Channel 12 ice fishing tip. Had several questions asked recently, should I leave fish for fish? And it's really hard to answer that question, sort of a gut feel, if you will. You know, if you're catching a few fish, but you feel maybe weather conditions are ideal, maybe there's no fishing pressure, and you feel, you know, I should have a little bit more success than what I'm having now. In other words, we do not want to get complacent in our fishing success. Do move. There's nothing wrong with that. I was just out ice fishing and I'd done exactly the same thing. I went, I was fishing in deeper water, 17 feet, and moved to approximately 13 feet, but there was a transition area from a soft to a hard bottom, and guess what? That's where the bluegills were. So it does pay, but always remember, you can always go back to that initial area that you started. So there's nothing wrong with moving. Again, there's no certain criteria. It's a gut feel, experience, but do consider moving when it is slow. Be sure to tune in next week for another tip. Just keep enough fish for the frying pan. Terry's tips can be seen every Thursday on 12 News through the end of February. So the grass can be greener on the lake, too. I know. We never knew. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Jake. Jake. Well, up next, local high school actors and actresses dazzle on stage. See how two local high schools are being honored for their theater productions when we come back. And finally, theater groups at two local high schools are getting high honors from the pros. The Hennepin Theater Trust Spotlight Musical Program chose Wyzetta High School's production of Spamalot for an honorable mention. It's a musical comedy adapted from the film Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And Maple Grove High School's production of Cinderella was named an outstanding overall production. Many of the student actors in both shows are also recognized for their performances. They'll get a chance to work with professionals who offer training and feedback and they will be honored at a two-day event at the Orpheum Theater in St. Paul in June. Of course, both shows were, I think, last November, and we featured them on Weekend Showcase All here right. on Channel 12. They're so this good is where shows. you can see the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Community Corners coming up next.